Welcome to the South Atlantic Council's presentation on Regulatory Amendment 16 for public hearings. Um, I'm Brian Chevron, I'm council staff, and I'm the one leading you through this presentation. Black sea bass um, stock was declared recovered in 2013 through a CDAR 25 update assessment. As a result of that assessment, the commercial sector ACL was increased from 3,009,000 pounds to 780,000 pounds whole weight. And in order to increase the ACL immediately, the South Atlantic Council prohibited black sea bass pot usage from November through April to avoid the delay for an analysis of potential interactions with endangered North Atlantic right whales. If the council didn't implement the November to April closure, the new commercial sector ACL couldn't be effective until a new biological opinion investigating the relationship between black sea bass pots and whales was completed. So it was always the council's intention to go back and investigate opening the black sea bass pot fishery from November to April. Now, it needs to be stated up front that this amendment really only affects the commercial sector of the black sea bass fishery. So the purpose of Regulatory Amendment 16 is to reduce the scope of the annual November 1 through April 30th prohibition on the use of black sea bass pot gear and enhance buoy line weak link gear requirements and buoy line rope markings for black sea bass pots as required by the Atlantic Large Whale Take Reduction Plan. And the need for the amendment is to reduce the adverse socioeconomic impacts to black sea bass pot endorsement holders created by the annual November 1 through April 3rd prohibition on the use of black sea bass pot gear and to increase the flexibility of black sea bass pot endorsement holders to fish with this gear while continuing to afford protection to ESA listed whales in the South Atlantic region. In addition, the need is to reduce the adverse effects on whales if entangled and to help identify black sea bass pot lines used in the South Atlantic. Now this um, amendment consists of two actions. Action one considers 16 different alternatives and subalternatives that evaluate different opening scenarios for the pot fishery from November 1 through April. Now the range of these alternatives is very, very complicated and convoluted. But one of the things that kind of helps to tell the difference between them is that all these scenarios take into account the following the timing of opening and closures and areas that would be opened or closed and or the depth of fishing areas that would be opened or closed. Now alternative one, no action. Um, this would leave in place the current prohibition on the use of black sea bass pot gear from November 1st through April 30th in the South Atlantic Council's jurisdictional area, which is from about Key West, Florida up to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina for black sea bass. Now, if you'd like to follow along on these alternatives and subalternatives, they're in the public hearing summary document and the list of the alternatives begins on page seven. Now in that summary, it also lists the um, lat longs of the points where um, the, these areas are being defined as well as then followed by maps that you can see. Alternative two has the black sea bass pot closure applying to the areas currently designated as North Atlantic right whale critical habitat. But please understand that that area is currently under review and this alternative is a, if it is selected as the preferred alternative would not automatically change that area when the new right whale critical habitat area is delineated. And that current area runs approximately from the mouth of the Altamaha River in Georgia to approximately Jacksonville, Florida from the shoreline out to about 15 nautical miles offshore and from Jacksonville south to approximately Sebastian Inlet, Florida from the shoreline out to five nautical miles. And this closure would um, apply from November 15th through April 15th. Alternative three um, is an area that likely represents North Atlantic right whale calving habitat based on more recent studies. And this covers an area from Ponce Inlet, Florida through Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. And the closure would apply from November 1 through April 30th. Alternative four um, for waters 25 meters or shallower from Cape Canaveral, Florida to Savannah, Georgia, 
and for waters under council management that are from 30 meters or shallower from the South Carolina Georgia border to Cape Hatteras. And this closure would apply from November 1 through April 30th. And this area is based on right whale sightings data. Alternative five would have a closure from Daytona Beach, Florida to the Georgia South Carolina border based on historical sightings. And from the Georgia South Carolina border, um, to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, up to 30 nautical miles offshore, and this closure would apply from November 1 through April 30th, and this alternative was suggested by non-governmental organizations. Alternative 6 uh, is an area that represents an existing management area, the Southeast Seasonal Gillnet Restricted Area under the Atlantic Large Well Take Reduction Plan. And the area off South Carolina, excuse me, off North Carolina includes water shallower than 30 meters and is northward of the designated Atlantic Large Well Take Reduction Plan Southeast Restricted Area. And this closure applies from November 1 through April 30, and it also was accept, um, suggested by NGOs. Now, Alternative 7 has three subalternatives, but Alternative 7 covers uh, the currently designated um, North Atlantic Right Well Critical Habitat. And from approximately north of the Altamaha River, Georgia, to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, out to about 25 meters depth. Subalternative 7A is the closure would be in place from November 1 through December 15th and March 15th through April 30th. Subalternative 7B, um, off Georgia and Florida, the closure applies from November 15th through April 15th. And off the Carolinas, the closure applies from November 1st through December 15th and from March 15th through April 30th. Subalternative 7C has off Georgia and Florida, the closure applies from November 15th through April 30th, and off the Carolinas, the closure applies from February 15th to April 30th. Alternative 8 also has uh, some subalternatives, and uh, this alternative uh, uses the boundaries off Florida and Georgia are identical to the boundaries as shown in Alternative 5. And off the Carolinas, the Black Sea Bass Pot Closure applies to uh, the EEZ in waters shallower than 25 meters. Uh, Subalternative 8A would have the closure apply from November 1 through April 15th, and all subalternative 8B would have off Georgia and Florida, the closure applies from November 15th through April 15th, and off the Carolinas, the closure applies from November 1st through December 15th, and then again from April 15th through April 30th. Alternative 9. Uh, shows the closures are identical to the boundaries in Alternative 5. And off the Carolinas, the Black Sea Bass Spot closure applies in the EEZ in water shallower than 20 meters. The subalternatives for Alternative 9 would have, subalternative 9A would have the closure applying from November 1st through April 15th. And subalternative 9B would have off Georgia and Florida, the closure would apply from November 15th through April 15th. And off the Carolinas, the closure would apply from November 1st through December 15th and February 15th through April 30th. Alternative 10 would have the boundaries off Florida and Georgia are identical to those boundaries in alternative 5. Off the Carolinas, the Black Sea Bass Pot Closure applies in the EEZ in water shallower than 20 meters from November 1 through December 15th and 25 meters from February 15th through April 30th. Alternative 10 has uh, closures from February 15th through April 30th, and the closure applies to waters approximately from the um, uh, Georgia, South Carolina state line to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. And from December 16th through February 14th, there would be no closure off the Carolinas. And from November 15th through April 15th, the closure applies to waters approximately from the Georgia, South Carolina state line to approximately Daytona Beach, Florida. Alternative 11. Um, November 1st through the 30th, and from April 1st through the 30th each year, the boundaries off Georgia and Florida are identical to the boundaries in Alternative 5. And off the Carolinas, the closures apply in waters shallower than 25 meters, corresponding with Alternative 8. 
And December 1st through March 31st, the closure area generally represents waters 25 meters or shallower from Cape Canaveral, Florida to Savannah, Georgia. And from the Georgia-South Carolina border to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, the closure applies to waters that are 30 meters or shallower and corresponds with alternative four. And alternative 12, uh, from November 1st through April 30th, the closure applies to waters approximately from Cape Canaveral, Florida to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. This closure approximates the midpoints between the proposed closure in alternative four and the closure from subalternative 8A. Now, the council has no preferred alternatives for um, action one, and they would like to hear from the public at what you think should be uh, their choice for the preferred alternative. Now, each of these alternatives has differing risks um, of the chance of having um, an entanglement with a North Atlantic right whale. And work has been done to try to quantify that risk. And the table on the next page shows the relative risk in the order from least to most relative risk. So the most protective of the alternatives is alternative one, because that would allow no fishing from November 1 through April 30th using black sea bass pot gear. And so that would have the least amount of risk of entanglements with North Atlantic right whales. While alternative two probably has the highest uh, risk of uh, encountering uh, North Atlantic right whale. And as you can see on this graphic, all the other alternatives and subalternatives sort of fall in between there. Now there's a potential for early closures that occurs with some of these alternatives uh, because there, some of the alternatives would have more black sea bass being caught by pots during the November through April time frame. The more fish caught earlier in the fishing year, which now starts on January 1, the greater the likelihood the ACL would be met by the end of the calendar year. Now, all of the alternatives, alternative one through alternative 12, predict that somewhere between 97% and 100% of the ACL would be caught in any given year. Now, this table shows uh, expected closure dates for each of the different alternatives and subalternatives. It also has four scenarios. The four scenarios represent uh, four potentially different uh, catch rates. Uh, and the reasons why there are four different potential catch rates is because the, um, the combination of things that we have in effect now have never existed in the past. And so there is no way to accurately predict exactly what the catch rate is going to be. Now, under alternative one, you'll see that it says no closure is expected. And you'll see in some of the other alternatives, such as alternative six, and alternative 7B, et cetera, it gives a, a range of, for example, alternative six, um, December 20th to NC, and NC means no closure. In the other alternatives, you can see, uh, it gives a range of what they expect the, the closure date would be. And most of those closure dates do fall in the November, December time frame, or no closure at all. However, there are some that do occur as early as uh, mid-August under certain scenarios. So the economic effects of the different alternatives um, has to do with uh, how we estimate the price per pound might be for a black sea bass in any given month. And the expected price to be paid for black sea bass varies um, based on the time series and the month used to estimate the dockside value of black sea bass. Now, the, there are two time series that we used. One was uh, from 2000 to 2013, and the other is from 2011 through 2013. These two were ch uh, time frames are chosen basically as bookends, and we think that the actual value is somewhere going to be be somewhere between those two uh, values shown for each alternative under the different four, uh, scenarios. Um, the 2000 through 2013 has the effect of smoothing the values over the years, and 2011 through 2013 has the effect of maybe enhancing it at least in some months and in other months like some of the summer months where uh, the fishing had occurred um, then those might uh, actually be artificially depressed but the the um, 
what we're suggesting is, is that somewhere between these two numbers is where the actual number would be. And it was calculated out using the four different catch rate scenarios. So you can see that black sea bass um, using pots is expected to land uh, a value of somewhere between $463,000 and slightly over a uh, million dollars with most of the value somewhere in the 500 to 700 and maybe up to 800,000 range. Now, while landings by gear type, pots versus other commercial gears, which are primarily hook, uh, hook and line, while that varies widely by alternative, the overall dockside value uh, of the entire commercial fishery changes very little when compared to alternative one. So what this means is that if more landings are being made by the pot sector, generally there will be fewer landings by other gears. It's, it's, what we're doing is by these alternatives is shifting the landings from uh, one gear sector to another. So what this table does is it looks at what the overall value, the differences in the value might be between each of the alternatives by scenario compared to alternative one and what the estimated difference for the value of the entire commercial uh, black sea bass uh, fishery would be for all gears. And you can see it is relatively small. Um, it could uh, be as much as 50 or $60,000, um, but it also could be negative as well as perhaps when you look at alternative three, there's a chance that the value could actually even be less than alternative one because of the timing of when the catches would occur. So how would other sectors besides the pot sector be affected? Any alternative that would have the commercial sector ACL caught prior to the end of the year would affect fishing by other commercial gears as all commercial fishing for black sea bass will stop as soon as that ACL is met. The alternatives and subalternatives will shift the percentage of landings between the different commercial gears. And here's where I give you an estimate of that. I had mentioned it earlier as well. So what this table is showing you is for the different price scenarios um, and the different catch rate scenarios, what is the expected percentage of landings um, that would occur from black sea bass pot gear as a percentage of the entire ACL landed uh, in the commercial fishing. And as you can see, uh, under alternative one, which is the current status quo, uh, black sea bass pots will land approximately between 31 and 35 percent of the, the total ACL. Uh, and that's a complete flip-flop from the way it used to be um, prior to the November through April closure that is currently in place. Um, and None of the scenarios that we have now actually completely reverse the effects of the um, of the closure that uh, happened in uh, from November through April. Um, but as you can see, in all cases, all of the alternatives do give a higher percentage of landings to the black sea bass pot sector compared to alternative one. Now, also we have to consider the cost of a whale entanglement. So um, the potential economic outcomes need to be weighed against the chance that a North Atlantic right whale could become entangled in black sea bass pot gear. It's never been demonstrated that uh, this has actually occurred um, because there's never been any gear that's been identified to black sea bass pot gear. But it doesn't mean that it hasn't ever happened. It just means that it has never been able to be identified as belonging specifically to this gear. Now, the National Marine Fisheries Service estimates that it costs approximately $88,000 for a multi-agency attempt to rescue a North Atlantic right whale from unspecified entangled fishing gear in 2010. And also a cost of an entanglement is that if it turns out that um, an entanglement with a North Atlantic right whale occurs as a result of black sea bass uh, pot gear, that sector of the fishery could be shut down if a whale interaction did occur. Now, action two 
considers black sea bass pot gear modifications potentially to reduce the risk of entanglement or make it easier for a whale to escape an entanglement. Modifications include lighter weight buoy lines, weaker weak links, and additional line markings that would help identify gear as black sea bass pot gear if, recover, if recovered from a whale. So alternative one is no action. Basically, it's the current gear marking requirements that are included in the Atlantic Large Rail Take Reduction Plan. And the um, uh, link here takes you to that Atlantic Large Rail Take Reduction Plan where you can find out a lot of information about gear marking requirements and even potential closure areas, or excuse me, where uh, gear restriction areas uh, now currently occur. Preferred alternative two, modifies the Atlantic Large Well Take Reduction Plan buoy line requirements. And the preferred subalternative 2A um, says that from November 1 through April 30th, the buoy line breaking strength must not exceed 2,200 um, pounds in federal waters in the South Atlantic EEZ. And subalternative 2B um, would have uh, from November 1 through April 30th, the buoy line breaking strength must not exceed 1,200 pounds in federal waters in the South Atlantic EEZ. Now, um, the, that 2,200 pounds is required in several states in the South Atlantic EEZ, but it is not required in all of them. And so what this uh, preferred subalternative would do would be to require in all South Atlantic states um, and all fishing in the South Atlantic EEZ. Preferred alternative three would modify the current Atlantic Large Well Tech Reduction Plan weak link requirements. From November 1 through April 30th, the breaking strength of the weak links must not exceed 400 pounds for black sea bass pots in the South Atlantic EEZ. And shown here is what a weak link is, but some fishermen actually use hog rings and they'd have to put the number of hog rings on there that would um, uh, equate to no more than 400 pounds uh, breaking strength. And preferred alternative four would require an additional 12 inch wide purple band added to the end of each required 12 inch colored mark. Um, and this could be done either through paint or for example, weaving in surveyor's tape into the line. And this additional gear marking requirement from this alternative um, would be added to those in federal waters from November 15th through April 15th of the Southeast uh, Restricted Area North, September 1 through May 31 for the offshore trap pot area, and September 1 through May 30th, excuse me, May 31st, the Southern Nearshore Trap Pot Waters area. And again, those areas can be found in that link that uh, I showed you from a couple slides back. Um, that's it for the two actions in this regulatory amendment. There are several ways that you can comment on the amendment. You can send your written comments to the address here. Uh, you can email your comments to Mike Collins. Please be sure to put in the subject line of the email, uh, something that indicates that it's uh, related to regulatory amendment 16. You can fax your comments to this number here and comments will be accepted until 5 p.m. on August 21st uh, by any of these methods. You can also attend in-person public hearings. August 11th, uh, it's going to be at the Holiday Inn Express in Little River, South Carolina. August 12th will be at Comfort Suites in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And on August 17th, we had Hull Seafood Market in Ormond Beach, Florida. And all these public hearings uh, begin at 4 p.m. Now here's the timeline uh, for Regulatory Amendment 16. Uh, public hearings are occurring in August. The South Atlantic Council will review the public comments that they receive um, and reviews the final documents and makes any modifications. And it's going to approve the actions at their September 2015 meeting. And the South Atlantic Council will be reviewing the timeline because there's some other parts of this that the council doesn't um, necessarily put together, but like the, um, the environmental impact uh, statement and the biological opinion will also have to all be done before this can be submitted to the secretary for formal review. Um, but right now, the council is hoping that they will review the final document and make any modifications as necessary and approve the document for formal review in December. And uh, the council hopes that we would be submitting this document for formal review by mid-January and the target date for regulations to be in place is summer of 2016. Um, so it's not going to change anything um, for this coming uh, year. Um, it's going to be 
uh, the way it is, unless it is possible to reopen the black sea bass pots or can allow black sea bass pots to continue fishing beginning in November of 2016. We just have to see uh, at the uh, rate at which this uh, moves through the system. Okay, if you have any questions, um, again, I'm Brian Chevron. This is my email address and phone number, and you can come and uh, contact me through these methods, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have, um, and thank you very much.